What's up guys, welcome to GT Content, I'm Gary. So the most exciting recent automotive news was the Nissan Z Proto unveil. It was nice to watch as a car enthusiast because it's been over a decade and we're finally seeing a next generation Z. I, I used to own a 1990 300ZX Twin Turbo so it was great to see how the Z has evolved and now back to using a Twin Turbo V6. Even though it's called the Proto Z, it's not a concept and it's very close to production. The retro styling was inspired by the 240Z and 300ZX. Plans for the next generation Z started back in 2017 and will hopefully be out next year with chassis code Z35. If it follows tradition, then this Z will be called the 300Z since it's most likely going to be using a 3.0 V6, twin turbo in this case. If it follows marketing, then it'll be called the 400Z. I'm going to stick with Nissan USA calling it a Z since the only thing we've seen so far is the Fair Lady Z badging on the rear and that's most likely going to be used for the Japanese market and elsewhere in the world. Aesthetics is all preference. I think it's simple, clean, retro yet modern and should be good for a 5-10 to 10 year lifespan compared to what Nissan was trying to do in the early 2000s with the Z's comeback. I know the color was to form a fond memory from the past 240Z, but I think this was a bad color choice for an unveiling. You can't really see the details of the different contours and depth of the car to admire its proportions. The headlights are referencing the 240Z, but it looks like a mix of Z32 and 240Z because of the shape to me, but that might just be the Z32 owner in me speaking. Here's a size comparison chart of the 350Z, 370Z, and new Z. The chassis is carried over from the 370Z, but it's supposed to be improved and is about 6 inches longer and slightly wider than the 370Z. This new Z is also supposed to be more rigid and aerodynamic. The front grille opening is large in proportion to the car, but that should help with cooling the twin turbo V6. We've seen the small front grille opening issues in the C7 Corvette Z06 and Honda Civic Type R at the track. The naturally aspirated 370Z was also known to have cooling issues, so hopefully the wider front grille will help it out. The front crash bar should be located at the top behind the grille, so the whole front grille isn't really exposed to air coming in which limits cooling. I still think they could add two openings on the sides for more cooling, but that may come at a later time when it receives its first revision. The side skirts look to have carbon fiber extensions to match the front splitter, which is also carbon fiber, and there is a slight double bubble top on the roof which transitions into a rear roof spoiler with what looks like a third brake light. The rear is inspired by the 300ZX and it also has a carbon rear lower diffuser with dual exhaust system. All the carbon fiber parts here might be from Nissan's own innovative processes and I'd like to know how much is used on the Z. It would be nice to see some exotic materials in the Z to lower the weight but I guess we'll have to find out at a later date. The interior right here looks very similar to the 370Z if you take a quick glance and don't pause for a moment to admire the details such as the more upscale look and modernization. It makes sense they would look alike because this new Z is said to be using an updated chassis so they would share proportions. There is a 12 inch digital cluster and infotainment in the center. The cluster is displaying sport mode and the RPM gauge is centered with various readings like boost on the left and other gauges on the right. So now we can guarantee that the next Z is boosted. Being that this is displaying sport mode, it might be customizable by the driver to other modes. Notice that there's also a red line warning light right above the tachometer so that you don't over rev. Three mechanical gauges are located on the center dash for boost, battery voltage, and something else that I can't make out. Let me know if you know what the middle gauge could be. At this point, it's too too blurry for me. These gauges reference back to the Dawson 240Z, and they were also seen in the 350Z and 370Z. They didn't talk about performance, and that was kind of my gripe about the whole uh, Z unveiling experience, so I'll try to figure that out with the information we've been given. The Proto Z used 19 inch wheels and Dunlop tires, 25540 R19 front and 28535 R19 rear. That's wide compared to the 370Z. A car we're familiar with that uses 285 wide rear tires is the Corvette. 
There were also the six piston front and four piston rear brake calipers that I mentioned in my previous video. And there were also the two piece drilled rotors. The calipers and rotors look to be borrowed from the Nissan GTR. And this makes me think that the Z will make more than 400 horsepower with this type of brake system. But at the same time, this could also be used for a Nismo model or it's just for this presentation. Now regarding the weight, it should be more than the current 370Z, which ranges from 3,200 to 3,400 pounds because of the turbo plumbing and its larger size. So let's say 3,400 to 3,600 pounds. The engine is most likely going to be the VR30 DDTT V6 twin turbo, which uses water-cooled intercoolers to reduce plumbing and make it more compact. We've already seen the VR30 DDTT fit in this chassis with the 370Z Club Sport, so it shouldn't be anything surprising. The new Z has a redline of 7,000 RPM and the Q60, which also uses the VR30, has the same redline. So most likely we're going to see the same engine in the Z. The Q60 has a 9,000 RPM tachometer while the Z only has a 8,500 RPM one, but I don't think anyone's going to be taking them that far in stock form. It's most likely just for looks. There are two versions of the VR30 DDTT used in the Infiniti Q60, so I don't know if Nissan plans to also include this option in the Z. It still doesn't make any sense because the 370Z made 332 to 350 horsepower, so a lower trim with 300 horsepower would be a downgrade. Going back to what I said earlier about the tire size, which could be a proto only kind of deal, well, they used a 285 width rear tire which is only found on the 400 to 450 horsepower Corvette. So I'd expect the Z to only use the 400 horsepower version of the VR30 with this clue. One of the great features that enthusiasts are happy to see is that the Nissan Z will have a six speed manual transmission. It's nice to know that a car manufacturer is still offering an organic experience with a manual transmission despite the technological advances of autos these days. And speaking of auto, there will most likely be the option for a 7-speed automatic transmission that's shared from the Infiniti Q60. Since it was a luxury car, it wasn't performance oriented, so hopefully Nissan does some tweaks and tunes to it for the Z so that it can be sportier. The manual transmission in the 370Z is capable of 1000 horsepower, but the dark side of the transmission is the concentric slave cylinder. If they plan to continue using it, then expect there to be issues. Owners have been stranded at times, unable to get into gear or experience shifting problems while driving at the track or spiritedly. The issues seem to be caused by heat or a weak design, and there has been an aftermarket created to solve this problem, costing around $500, and it's something that Nissan should have taken care of in the 370Z. $500 for parts plus a new clutch and labor can be over $1,000 quick just for this job. Nissan should just go back to using something like the CD009 from the 350Z, which has an external slave cylinder, since that seems to be the design flaw of the one currently used in the 370Z. Let's hope that they take care of this issue for the new Z so manual enthusiasts can shift happily. Performance wise, they didn't tell us who they were targeting. Well, maybe the Supra with the manual hints, but they weren't upfront about it, not even zero to 60 times. I think performance will be similar to the Toyota Supra, zero to 60 in under four seconds and quarter mile in the low 12s. The driving characteristics may be similar to the 370Z if they're using a similar chassis and suspension, just now with more power, grip and brakes. Uh, of course, this is just my assumption and eventually we'll all find out. The aftermarket will definitely need to accept it in order to be successful. And I'll be making another video for VR30 DDTT upgrades in the future to let you guys know what the current limits and maximum potential is. I think that pretty much covers my thoughts for the Z Proto unveil for now. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and also don't forget to hit that like button to support my channel. I'll continue with more Z updates in the future so also hit that subscribe button for more Z content. I'll see you guys in the next one.